Our first scripture lesson today comes from 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, and skipping to 9 through 10. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall rule, shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. At Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And at Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from the Milo inward. And David became greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. And now we turn to our second lesson, which is very much about the love and joy and peace flowing from the disciples, from you and me out into the world. The text comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. So listen once more for the word of God. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Whenever, wherever you enter a house, Stay there until you leave this place. If any place will not welcome you they, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and performed and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Well, some of you may know this, others may not, but uh, before my seminary days, I served as a campus minister. I was a campus minister at Gannon University, which is a, a Catholic university in Northwest Pennsylvania. As a campus minister there at this Catholic university, my office worked very closely with our Center for Social Concerns. Catholic Church has a, has a rich history of social engagement and a, a deep theology of peacemaking. And they have an overwhelming and abundant commitment to the work of establishing justice in the world. And again, and we tried to live this out in a variety of ways, much like you and I do here at North Wilkesboro Presbyterian Church. 
one program that was particularly impactful in the lives of our students was our alternative break service trip program. This is fairly popular around the country, but students would use their spring breaks to take trips all over the country to immerse themselves in communities and to learn about the many issues that were facing the people there. And then they would offer gifts of service in a variety of ways. And I was able to lead several of these trips during my tenure at Gannon, and they were always really wonderful times, really meaningful times of growing and learning and serving with students. And, and you know, it was one of those things where you go expecting to make an impact, but you recognize on the way home that you have been impacted as well. We always came home as changed people because there's something about working together and serving people that just has its way of, of getting inside you and changing you in ways that maybe you didn't even expect. And I remember one trip in particular. It was a trip to Fort Smith, Arkansas. It was the first trip that I had the pleasure of leading. And we were going to be working with a, an organization that you are likely familiar with. We were going to be working with Habitat for Humanity. If you can remember all the way back to this past March, we actually hosted a group from St. Joseph's University in Pennsylvania who was doing similar work here in Wilkes County. We made our way, our way down uh, from Erie, Pennsylvania to Fort Smith, Arkansas. And we were so excited. So excited to get out there and start serving. So ready to start building a house for a family in need. But we were not ready for what we actually encountered once we got there. Because we were not going to be building a house for a family in need. We were going to be getting five houses ready for five families in need, the 12 of us on this trip. It just so happened that our spring break up in Northwest Pennsylvania fell a week before most of the college and universities in the area. And so we were doing all of the prep work for the, group that, the groups that were gonna come in behind us and actually do the work of building the walls and raising the roofs. We had to get the foundations of those homes ready. We were doing the heavy lifting, the concrete work, quite literally the concrete work, the mixing and the pouring of not just one, but of five different slabs for five different homes. And there was this mountain, I mean, an enormous mountain of material, of, of concrete and stand and stone that we had to work with. We had to fill it by hand into wheelbarrows and take it over to those five slabs or soon-to-be slabs. It was just grueling, grueling work every day, taking that mound of material, putting it in wheelbarrows, mixing it by hand and pouring those slabs. And at the end of every single day, we would come back dog tired, filthy, and exhausted. Our arms and our legs were so dead tired from all of the heavy lifting. We had no doubt. There was no doubt because our bodies were yelling at us, screaming at us. There was no doubt that we had worked really, really hard day in and day out that week. And and throughout the week, as the week progressed, we did see that mountain of material get a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter. By the end of the week, it was gone. And we saw those slabs slowly and steadily become flat and smooth and strong. And by the time we left at the end of the week, those five houses were ready to go up. We had done our job and the people came, that came behind us they built those five houses so that five families would have a place to call home. It was a wonderful and remarkable experience. And we worked really, really hard. But one of the things, one of the things that, that Habitat for Humanity does so very well is that they, they are providers. That's what they do. Not just, not just providing homes for people who don't have a home, but they provide for the people who are serving as well. 
People in the community would donate meals for us to eat. So every day, every day on the work site, we were given lunch. And every night when we got home and after we were cleaned up, we were given dinner. Usually some church would provide something for us to eat, much like we did for those students of St. Joe's who joined us at Kirk Night that Wednesday evening. And other times it was just people in the community who provided for us. They would, they would drop off lunch and dinner and, and we'd have the opportunity to get to know them a little bit, get to know who they were and, and how they were connected to Habitat and and why they chose to provide something for people that they didn't even know. And that's really a remarkable experience. It's really humbling to be cared for by people that you have not even met yet. People we didn't even know were taking care of us simply because we were down there with them, working with them, investing in their community. But those weren't, all, those weren't the only people we knew. If you're not familiar with how Habitat works, you may be interested in knowing that one of the requirements, one of the requirements to receive a home is that you also have to be invested in the process of getting it built for you. This means that all of that hauling and mixing and concrete pouring that we did to get those foundations ready we also had the opportunity to meet the people who were going to be receiving those homes. We got to work alongside them. And they did what they could do because they couldn't be there all the time. They were working their real full-time jobs, their low-paying jobs in retail and in restaurants and in other service industries. But, but they were there working with us as much as they could and we got a chance to get to know them a little bit as well. And there was one man and one woman in particular that we got to know a little bit deeper than all the rest. They were both really, really friendly people. We shared all sorts of stories about the history of Fort Smith and the history of the state, of the community in which they lived, and especially the many issues that they were facing as poor people living there. And for some reason, we just connected with them. It was so easy to talk to them and learn from them, so much so that they invited us to come to a community play on Wednesday evening. Wednesdays are usually free nights in the Habitat world, so we had nothing else to do, so we, we joined them. And I can't tell you what the play was that we saw, but we did go with them, and after the show, we visited one of the local hotspots, the local diner for, for dessert. And we sat there with them and talked with them and talked with them and talked with those folks for, for a couple of hours about all sorts of stuff, about what their hopes for their community were, about our students and what they were studying and learning about and how they wanted to use the rest of their lives and about just life together. It was a perfect night. It was a perfect night for us after all of that really hard and grueling work. It was just what we needed. It was light and social and fun. And when the time came for us to part ways, the, the waitress, of course, came with that little sleep slip of paper that had our tab on it. And that's when our new friends raised their hands and said, without hesitation, right here, we'll take that. And we thought, what? No, oh, and we went back and forth like good friends always do over the check at the end of the meal. But it became clear that they were not going to give in. They were not for a second going to let us pay for that treat. We were just so grateful for that evening, for their hospitality, for the good conversation. And we knew that we would see them later in the week. So we, we said our goodbyes and we left for the house that we were staying in. And we got back to that house and we had a custom that we would check in with one another and have a brief reflection at the end of the evening. And we got in and we sat down in the living room for our brief time together and we were just overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by the generosity of this poor man and this poor woman 
who had treated us to the most wonderful evening. We were humbled by these people who, who we didn't even know. We had just met them, but they knew just what we needed, and they were not going to let us go without. We were just flooded with emotion that these people who didn't know us at all before this week, that they would give so much of their time and so much of their resources to care for us. These people who were mired in their own poverty would treat us to a show and to dessert to follow. It seems to me that that's, that's what Jesus is getting at with his disciples, sending them out in pairs to love and to serve people, knowing what they were headed into. They were to go. They were to go with nothing, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, only the staff in their hand and the sandals on their feet and the tunic around their shoulders. They were to go. They were to go and rely on the goodness and the hospitality of strangers, those to whom they were being sent. And you know, Jesus does offer a, a provision for them just in case things go south, that shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. But there's no evidence that they ever had to use that tactic. All we have is a simple statement of the impact that they made. That they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed them with oil, many who were sick, and cured them. See, that's what happens. That's what happens when we start to recognize that we're all connected rather than being in contention with one another. When we stop looking at each other as adversaries and start seeing each other as allies. When our communities become places of hospitality rather than hostility. That's what happens. We're changed. It changes us. Communities are changed. The world is changed to become more and more and more like the kingdom of God. That's when we find our place. That's when we can say we're heading home. So as you leave here from this place in just a little bit, I pray that you might go and experience the goodness of this community, the people who live here, I pray that you would go and make connections with anyone and everyone you can. And as you do, as you do, I pray that you would be changed as God works in you, as God works through you, and as God works in and through our community as well. So go. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we go from the comforts of this place out into a world that God so dearly and deeply loves. We go as people who have been changed by the love of God inside of us. And now we go out to be changed by a community that is ready and willing and able to welcome. If only we would go. If only we would make connections. If only we would meet anyone and everyone around. So go. Go and be changed people. Go and make connections with those around you. Go and let God work in and through you. And let God work in and through a community in need as well. So go and go with this blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus the Christ, may the love of God our Creator, and may the partnership of the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, may that God go with you and with me and with us together, this day and forevermore. Alleluia. Amen.